words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. If you had been here, Lord, you would have lived. It's said twice in this little reading we have. It's a little, really, compared to the Gospel of John, this is a little reading. If you had been here, he would not have died. First Martha says it, and then Mary says it, the exact same words. Anytime you see something repeated, we're supposed to pay attention to it, right? Lord, if you had been here, my loved one would not have died. This is what death does to the human spirit. It breaks us open and makes us feel as if God is not there, as if we're all abandoned. This story is showing us that that is not true. That even when we feel the presence of God not there, if we feel abandoned, it's just a feeling that God really is there. And that's the point of Jesus not coming when we demand him to be there, but coming when he wants to. God has God's reasons for doing what God does. But to hear this story, you can feel the anger when Jesus says to his friends, my friend Lazarus is dying and I think I'm not gonna go. This is for God's glory. I think I'll wait this one out. It's like, what are you thinking? Go, you can save him. So Martha rebukes him, which gives us permission to rebuke God, right? If you had been here, darn it, my brother would not have died. So she's professing her faith saying, I know you're capable of saving his life. You're God. And yet she's mad that he didn't come. That's totally understandable. And then, in case we didn't get it, Mary does the same thing. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But unlike Martha, she does something different. She cries. And she does another thing that's really different. Mary falls on her knees, worshiping Jesus. She is so distraught over the death of her brother that she can't do anything but cry. Martha, on the other hand, has this incredible pronouncement of faith after Jesus tells her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Whoever believes in me shall never die. And then Martha comes out with the quintessential verse about complete and adult faith in Christ. She says, uh, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. In the Gospel of John, that's as good as it gets. She says the complete belief statement, which is what the whole Gospel is written for, to get us to be able to say that with confidence. She says it, but there's more to the story, otherwise it wouldn't have kept going on. <laughs> there's more that we need to understand about death. Not just that we're separated from God, that we feel that God has left us abandoned, but that God knows all the time that it's always his glory that will weave its way into our story and into our personal loss. So when Jesus finally gets there, and we hear that the body has not only been dead and buried, but it stinks, or in the King James Version, it stinketh. I like that better. <laughs> I also like Jesus wept better, so I changed the text. The fact that he stinks, the body stinks, is so that we know without a doubt that as Christians, we do have to face death. The early Christian community was being taunted and teased in, because of this belief in the resurrection. They were saying, so if you believe in the resurrection, then why are you dying? You're all dying anyway. It's not going to save you from death. They were taunted. And this story shows what do we say when we're taunted because of our belief? Well, stay tuned, there's more. There's more. Mary, when she falls on her knees and worships Jesus, gives him the gift of her agony. She shares her grief with God. She looks him in the eyes, says how mad she is that he didn't come, and what, it what does it say about Jesus and his feelings? He was greatly moved. 
He was disturbed. He was shaken to the core of his being. Do we feel that God empathizes with us in our grief? If there is ever any doubt, go to John, read this verse. God is shaken to the core of God's being with our grief, grieving with us. And when Jesus cries, God is crying. There's this incredible movement of tears and grief and agony in the acceptance that yes, Lazarus has died. We believe in a God that goes with us through death and comes out on the other side a different kind of person. When Jesus is raised from the dead, who is it that calls for him out of the tomb? Who is it that says, Jesus, get up, come out, come out of the cave? It's God. God is calling for him. And it's God who raises up this new being from death. With the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a new kind of life. And Jesus teaches us that this new kind of life is not just waiting for us after death. It is ours in our belief. When we are dipped into that baptismal water and come back out of it again, we are new people. We are living the resurrected life now as we share these stories together, as we talk about real things, as we wonder why God doesn't show up when we snap our fingers. What is wrong with that God? This reading tells us that all of that is normal, but to stay tuned because God is always holding us gently, crying with us, and has something further for us to understand. So Jesus walks with this grieving crowd that involves the Jews. We hear the Jews are here from Jerusalem. This is all the Pharisees. They watch as Jesus yells at the top of his voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes out, still smelling, covered in wrappings, grave wrappings. We are to see in this a template of the resurrection. That's what it's meant for. That when Jesus comes out of the tomb, he leaves his grave wrappings there where he stood when God called him out of death. Lazarus' wrappings are taken off by his friends. And Lazarus is a resurrected person who has to go through death again. He was raised from death to give a taste of the resurrection. We've just had an hors d'oeuvre. Next week, we do the Passion Play as part of our Palm Sunday liturgy. It is because the Jews who saw this happen and didn't believe that they decide then and there that Jesus has to die. In the Gospel of John, it is this story that condemns Jesus to death. He raised someone to life. We can't have that. And we're going to make sure that he dies. However, those who do believe, and we see here that many of the Jews did believe, have a different story to tell. We know that whatever happens to us, including death, that we are participating even now in this resurrected life. That yes, we believe we will die. But what is it that lives, that is called to everlasting life? What is that part of us? Because it's in here too. Love. Jesus loved Lazarus. Jesus loved Martha. Jesus loved Mary. Love and belief in this love is what reaches beyond the grave and grabs us lovingly as the youthful person that we carry within us even as we age. This youthful believer, full of life, is part of who we are, and as Christians, we carry that self within us. We allow this self to be loved so powerfully by our Christ, by God, by the Holy Spirit, by the whole mystery of being Christians, that this love is what pulls us into life everlasting. And we have to practice being pulled like this. That's why we come to church. That's why we come up and take our hands and ask for the living bread and the living blood so that we take this sacrament into us, reminding us 
that Jesus is alive in us and will never die again. <clears throat> yes, we may die, but that living core of us never dies. Never dies. We can wail. We can get mad at Jesus. We can get mad at God. We can feel abandoned. We can cry with God. And the important thing is, is that even when we feel he's way far away and not coming to us on purpose, we can say it. We have permission to say all that and know that we are never forgotten. Jesus knew exactly what was happening the whole time. We are never forgotten. So we prepare for shouting hosannas next week and waving the palms because those of us who believe do worship him as Lord and King of all. And we can turn around in the same service and mourn that he had to be crucified for us. And we can weep at this. Because we are human, we die, and life turns on a page. It just turns. So get ready for Holy Week. Buckle your seatbelts. And believe that you are loved. Amen.